Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This time I want to talk about some mixing of some of the very basics, uh, panning, uh, levels, that type of thing. Um, and I want to kind of try and share a little bit of the knowledge that I have been looking for to help my own recordings. A little bit of a disclaimer is that in no way am I a professional. Um, I have no training in this. I am just a guy who sits at home and, you know, likes to play guitar on occasion and um, have been trying to improve my mixes. I am using Reaper as my DAW, but um, I guess all of that out of the way, uh, I just want to talk a little bit about the basics of mixing. So the whole idea when you're trying to mix a track is you're trying to make it easier to listen to. You're trying to um, use stuff like panning and levels and, and EQ to make what you want the listener to hear the most digestible as possible. And I'm going to try and kind of show some of the techniques and a little bit of back and forth. Hopefully it will be helpful. Um, but this is a track I've been working on. I've just been recording. It's got a, a drum beat that I found on the internet, and it's got a bass, a rhythm guitar, and a lead electric. Um, and so let's just play a little bit of it here so you can get a feel for what I'm talking about. Okay, so kind of a funk blues track, pretty straightforward. Um, the first thing that I want to do is talk a little bit about what I did to get to the point where I'm at now. So a couple of things is you want to try to pay attention to levels. So you know, you've got a whole bunch of different sliders here. Now this is my drum track, this is my rhythm electric, this is my bass, this is my lead electric, all pretty straightforward, and this is the intro. Uh, but these these level sliders are really important to pay attention to. So while I play the track, um, I can kind of keep track of where they're at generally. And as you can see, this is they've all been tweaked just a little bit to kind of make sure that you know the lead electric is a little bit louder, the bass is a little bit louder than the the riff and the drums, um, just because that's those are the levels that I decided brings it to where I want it to be. Pretty straightforward, um, and it just kind of takes some trial and error. Try listening. Uh, an important thing to note here is to try and listen to multiple different areas. So, um, you know, I have studio monitors here at home, and that's really important to hear your playback, because something like bass isn't going to be reproduced very well in, like, little earbud headphones or laptop speakers. Um, but it, I also think that it's important to get a variety of different things. So one thing that I'll do is I will do, like if I've got a track that I kind of like, I'll export it, put it on my iPod, I'll take it out to my car or listen to it on my computer or, you know, try to get lots of different places to listen to the track to get a baseline for what's good and what's bad. You know, you want it to sound good in all those different situations. And so um, it's important to keep that in mind. You know, it's just different, whatever you're using for your studio monitors, whatever room you're sitting in, all of those things will affect what frequencies are heard. So try to get a variety of things, and that will help you determine what to do with your levels. Just take some trial and error. Um, the next thing I want to talk about is panning. As you can see, I've got a little bit of panning going on here. Now, I have just done this as kind of like an experiment. Um, I've been experimenting with a lot of different panning settings. Again, by no way am I an expert, but these are just kind of some of the basic ideas to help you on your way. So the idea with panning is that you're using the stereo spectrum to um, give each instrument its own location, which kind of creates more clarity. Um, and what I mean by that is I will play two, diff two different tracks, which hopefully will highlight what I'm talking about. So um, this is my drum track. I've got a 25% to the left. This is my rhythm riff, I've got it 100% to the left, I've got the bass 25% to the right, and I've got the lead electric 100% to the right. So across the stereo spectrum from hard left to hard right, I've got kind of a cascade of all four of the different instruments set out there. And basically what I want to show is, um, so this first one is going to be uh, what it sounds like before I did any mixing. This is everything in this track is straight up at center. And you can listen to it here quickly. So 
that should give you a little bit of a baseline. Again, everything is in the center. Um, and then this is kind of the most recent iteration that I've got. So I hope that that kind of displays what I'm, the point I'm trying to make is that, in my opinion, the second one sounds a lot better because there's a lot more clarity with each track, um, especially in the beginning when I'm playing, the lead is actually playing the same riff as the rhythm. Now, that is called double tracking, and that is like a very common studio technique where you will play the same exact part and you will pan one side hard left and the other side hard right and it kind of has this cool thing because you're not playing both parts exactly identical to each other. There's always going to be a little bit of a difference. And actually, I use different guitars with different patches on my amp. You know, so there was quite a bit of difference going on there. And it creates a very interesting sound where there's a lot of dynamic there. And it kind of, it just is a, does a nice way of making it really stand out. And then when the lead part breaks up to more of the you know, breaks away from the rhythm, then it really starts to contrast. And you have kind of, you know, I'm listening to this on headphones and studio monitors. And if in the car, those are great places to hear all that's going on in the stereo spectrum. And again, it just helps to provide a tremendous amount of clarity. Um, and so, yeah, those are the two things I want to talk about is using your levels and using your um, panning hard left and hard right and anywhere in between to help give your overall mix some greater clarity. Again, these are just some very basic, straightforward things that anybody can take um, into account when they're getting into mixing. Again, in no way is this trying to be like a very professional way to get professional tracks. You know, I'm not there yet. But, um, you know, this is the process that it takes to get there is, is to start getting some of these basics down and start experimenting with them to find what works best for you. Um, you know, again, it really is all about um, finding... You know, I didn't even touch much on EQ and, and, and plugins and all those other things that you can do. There are so many different things you can do, but the end result is you're trying to make music, music that is enjoyable to listen to. And with this track, you know, it's a pretty straightforward, bare-bones track. I've got drums, bass, rhythm, and lead. And I wanted each of the parts to have a very, you know, kind of specific niche, so I focused more on the panning. I didn't really focus a ton on EQ because it's a pretty straightforward part, and I don't really feel like there's a ton of EQ that's necessary to really convey what I want. Um, so anyways, that is the video. I hope you guys enjoyed If you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below. If you have any other topics that you want me to consider when it comes to recording or electric guitar or mixing or mastering or those types of things, feel free to leave them in the comment section down below, and I'll see you again soon. Bye.